here, like, where would we be without the rural independence and the regional independence? Well done. The Consumer Protection Regulation of Retail Credit and Credit Servicing Firms Bill brings in a number of different consumer protections which are broadly welcome. The first protection I wish to highlight is the maximum annual percentage rate for credit agreements and higher purchase agreements set at 23 per cent. Crucially, the Bill states that it is the responsibility of the lender to ensure compliance with this regulation. Not all consumers or borrowers have the same understanding of how interest rates work. Some may have, a poorer, may have poorer numeracy skills than others, and it is for that reason, like, or reasons like those, that built-in protections such as a limit on interest rates are necessary. I'd imagine most of us are familiar with being in a shop or looking at buying something reasonably expensive, and the salesman says something along the lines of, this can be yours for a 300 euro deposit and 50 euros a week for the next two years. And that type of agreement may appeal to many people, but many, many people actually sit down and work out the APR on such an agreement, or indeed, how many people would be able to work out the APR or know whether the deal they were being offered was a rip-off or not. This is perhaps just one simple example of why the 23 per cent limit is welcome. The bill says that this maximum rate of 23 per cent will apply to credit agreements other than a money lending agreement. Now, money lenders are licensed by the central bank and have to comply with certain conditions, including providing warnings and full information of costs to consumers before they enter into any agreements. So I fail to understand why, in the interest of consumer protection, that this bill would not include some type of cap on the annual percentage interest rate that a money lender can charge. It's often in real financial difficulty, uh, perhaps those who are struggling in low-paid jobs, those trying to support families on their own, those who have an issue with substance abuse, or perhaps who are just poor money managers, skills don't have managed skills and unnecessarily spend more than their means. So whatever the reason is, surely those consumers who turn to the services of money lenders need protection too from massive interest rates. But it also adds a requirement for the Minister to request the bank to collect and publish information related to credit agreements, higher purchase agreements and consumer hire agreements. And that, in that, the bill also says that this information may be required on a one-off basis or on an ongoing basis. So it's worth noting that none of the regulations in the bill come without consequence. While the regulations may be deemed necessary, we must also recognise that very new regulation places an additional burden of work on financial institutions, meaning that their costs are likely to rise. And we have seen banks leave the Irish market in recent times. We have seen how increased regulations have helped cause problems in our housing market. So what we do need to consider is the impact that very new regulation has on the organisations who will be responsible for seeing that they are complied with. Finally, I'd like to highlight the contents of a pretty eye-opening press release I received earlier uh, this week, and it relates directly to consumer protection. It's from the Alliance for Insurance Reform, and it says Central Bank, its headline is Central Bank Analysis Shows Society Being Held to Ransom by Lawyers and Insurers. They make four specific claims, and each of them very concerning from a consumer protection point of view. Lawyers gouge clients as litigated claims for minor injuries cost up to 25 times in legal fees, and they take 2.7 years longer to settle and yield less for claimants than any PIAB award. Lawyers make an average of €22,792 in fees on employer liability claims for minor injuries. Insurers' losses due to poor investment performance, increased broker commissions, increased reinsurance costs and increased reserves, not claim costs. Claims co claim costs have been dropping since 2015 at a record low in 2019. But if a lawyer makes an average of 23,000 on employer liability claims for minor injuries, and the average, then the, 
and the average fees via PIAB for the same type of case is less than a thousand euros, then we have a serious consumer protection issue here which needs to be addressed. Issues like this should be more concerning for us than a furniture shop selling a sofa on a credit basis of 24 per cent interest. Overall, these consumer protections are welcome and I hope that the Minister is listening to my last point in relation to legal and insurance costs. Thank you, Ken Carl.